bring all warring factions in Syria to the table. Russia's foreign minister and his American counterpart have apparently come out in a show of unusual solidarity as they met in the Russian capital. But despite the US backtracking on its earlier stance, some leeway remains, as RT's Alexei Yaroshevsky explains. After a very lengthy meeting between the Russian president, uh, the Russian foreign minister and the U.S. state secretary, uh, hardly anybody in the press room expected that there would be somewhat of a backing down from a very harsh rhetoric which we heard from uh, Washington and Moscow on the Syrian conflict uh, lately. In fact, at one point of the press conference, John Kerry even said that there is a common perception uh, that Russia and the United States have been on a different page uh, about Syria when they were here to show to everyone that they were on the same page. Uh, in fact, the uh, main bottom line of the meeting, and that was voiced at the press conference, was that uh, the U.S. and Russia uh, have decided to call an international conference probably by the end of this month to have both the members of the Syrian government and the Syrian opposition at the same negotiation table to find uh, something of a peaceful solution to the uh, ongoing conflict in the country. Now, uh, an interesting twist to the press conference happened when, after the, the initiative was voiced, one of the reporters said, why should the Syrian, believe, Syrian people believe that this is the time this conference would actually change things? And uh, Russian foreign minister came up with a very interesting answer to that. At this stage, we have a task to convince all sides of the Syrian conflict to sit down at the negotiation table. After the Geneva communique was adopted last June, Damascus expressed their willingness to work according to this plan. Afterwards, the government established a committee which is responsible for dialogue with all Syrians. Yesterday, the foreign minister of Syria confirmed that they are committed to dialogue on the basis of the communique. But these are just words. In order for the words to become actions, we need to hear from the opposition as well. So far, we haven't heard a word from the opposition, which would confirm its commitment to the Geneva communique. But the press conference took an even more interesting twist when John Kerry was asked a question by a journalist uh, about the proposed legislation in the U.S. Congress to support the Syrian rebels with weapons and even military training. Uh, John Kerry's answer suggested that Despite uh, obvious closing in on positions on Syria between Russia and the United States, there's still a loophole remaining in the U.S. stance. There is some sentiment, both in the House and Senate, uh, to provide arms to the opposition. Uh, I think that ultimately that will be determined to some degree by the state of the evidence with respect to chemical weapons and what steps have been taken. So despite uh, the positions of, the, uh, of Russia and the United States closing in on Syria, as it was uh, repeatedly said at the press conference, still there is a feeling that they may be going in circles somewhat, uh, because, in particular because of the statements uh, by John Kerry about the uh, chemical weapons and about the possible uh, supply of weapons to the Syrian troops. Uh, if we remember last year when the Geneva communique was signed, uh, everyone was hopeful back then that this would bring the opposition and the Syrian government to the same negotiation table and that a peaceful solution will be found. This did not happen. Of course, we'll have to wait and see whether this will be the case this time. Uh, but definitely the initiative to call an international uh, conference at the end of this month was voiced by the sides. The question is whether this initiative will, of course, become a reality.